Hey, Church, hope you're doing well. So great to be with you and be able to connect on this Boxing Day and uh, praying that you had an absolutely fantastic Christmas with your family and also with your friends. And uh, really believing with you that this is going to be a significant season for every single one of us. Over the next few days, I want to talk to you uh, on the subject of my best life now. My best life now. I think One of the problems with always gazing into the future and always dreaming about a future moment, whether it be someone who you marry or a job or a a relocation or something like that, the challenge with it is this, is that looking too far ahead can often cause us to miss what we have in the moment. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13, it says, all of these people, that's the heroes of faith, did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. I find that fascinating. It's sad as well. They they had things promised to them, but they didn't receive them. And I wonder why not. Possibly one of the reasons for this is because our nature is to miss what is in anticipation for what will be. Maybe we're living our best life right now. Maybe what we need to do is have a rethink how we view life and what we consider to be a best version of our life. The Wall Street Journal a few years ago wrote this article and they said this, they said one of the main reasons why having more stuff doesn't always make us happy is that we tend to adapt to what we have. They said human beings are remarkably good at getting used to changes in their lives, especially positive changes. If you have a rise in income, it gives you a boost but then your aspirations rise too. Maybe you buy a bigger home in a new neighborhood and so your neighbors are richer and you start to want even more. You've stepped on the hedonistic treadmill. Trying to prevent that or slow it down is a real challenge. It could be as simple as setting aside time every day to follow the traditional advice of counting your blessings. They write increasing variety, novelty or surprise could also help you to enjoy your possessions more. They say when things become unchanging, That's when we adapt to them. One of the professors says, if you keep a painting hanging on the same spot of the wall, for example, you'll stop noticing it after a while. But if you swap that painting from one room to another, you'll see it more and with fresh eyes each day and you'll start to appreciate it even more. So I want to talk to you for a moment about my best life now. We're going to do this over the next few days as well. And let me just give you two thoughts on this to start us off. And the first thing is this, is I want to encourage you this season, learn to enjoy what you have. Learn to enjoy what you have. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5.19, if God gives a man wealth and property, he should be grateful and enjoy what he has. It's a gift from God. 1 Timothy 6.17 says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain but to put their hope in God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. I did hear many years ago a story about a missionary who was complaining about the old shoes that he was wearing until he came across a man where he was doing missions work, a man who had no feet. And it's a horrible graphic and yet... um, realistic story for us to learn once again to enjoy what we have. Maybe this Christmas and New Year season, you can have a moment of just learning once again to enjoy your family, your friends, your your housing, your clothing, the gifts that you received over Christmas and, and uh, you know, just learn to appreciate the moments. Or as that old school song says, count your blessings, name them one by one. And that might be a good Christmas and New Year thing to do, actually. Start to count your blessings on a daily basis. My second thought for today is this, is to remember that life is not actually about things. It's not about things. Sometimes we can think it's about things, but the reality is this, is that life is not about things. Luke chapter 12, verse 15 in the Good News Translation says this, Jesus said, watch out and guard yourselves from every kind of greed, because your true life is not made up of the things you own, no matter how rich you may be. Let me read that again. Your true life is not made up of of the things you own, no matter how rich you may be. 
really what Jesus is helping us to understand is that the most valuable things in life are not things. They're not things. What's important to you will control how you view life. Many years ago, I heard a story about a Native American who was walking with a friend through the streets of New York, big city. And in the midst of it all, this Native American stops and says, can you hear that cricket chirping? And the other man he was walking with said, no, I can hear people. I can hear coins dropping on the ground, but I can't hear the cricket chirping. And the Native American said this. He said, you tend to see and you tend to hear what's important to you. And I want to encourage you this Christmas and New Year's season, as we think about my best life now, remember your best life is not made up of things. Our value for life and our understanding that valuable things in life are more than just things that we can see with the eye. It's relationships. It's the people, family, friends, church that God has put us in. And of course, ultimately, our relationship with him as well. So stay blessed this Christmas season and I look forward to catching up with you again tomorrow in part two of our, our devotion together. Much love to you all and uh, see you soon. Bye.